Hi everybody, welcome back to Charming Data. So this week we're going to focus on the dash component called Interval. Interval actually allows you to update your app in real time without needing to refresh the page or use any buttons. You usually want to use this, people use this, when they have web analytical web apps that is connected to an external database or you're connected to an API where you get updated um, information on the weather or finances or really the news, anything, anything you get continuous updates on. You need to use the dash interval to uh, tell your app how often you want these updates to um, to happen with your web app and then when you want to stop them and different things you can do with this interval. So we're going to go over all these um, parameters and what each one of them means. So by the end of this tutorial you will be able to um, be an expert on the dash interval and manipulate it however you want. Um, we're going to do an example. I just built this for you guys so you see an example how this this is being used. As soon as we refresh our web app the interval is going to build a, a, a bar graph and it's going to every time it changes every three seconds uh, the bar graph is going to be retraced to to three and then it's going to stop at four so and it's going to stop at four or it's also going to stop if i put the word stop you'll see here it went up to four before and now i put stop so now it's not updating anymore so these are the few things that you can create with interval and we're going to see how we do it today um, open below the video um, click on the description and open the few links open this link so you can follow along and you can read the parameters here if you want and open the um, code link so you can uh, follow along and understand what i'm doing and then play around with it yourself okay so the first thing you want to do is you want to import these libraries, which has Plotly in there, and it has the, the Dash library. If you're new to Dash or you don't know what it is, um, just look in the video above my head uh, on the top right of your screen. It is called the drop down, um, the pie chart with a drop down, and that's where I go over the basics of Dash and how you can create interactive um, um, analytical apps with this uh, wonderful library. So I'm going to assume you know a little bit about Dash um, to teach you more about this interval. So you want to start the Dash app, then you want to go into uh, the layout. Inside the layout we're going to put the interval, DCC interval. And this is going to be invisible. It's just going to be in there because you need it in there to activate it. And then we're going to create a div where you're going to see the numbers uh, go from 1 to 3 to 4. And then we're going to create an input box where you can put stop or any type of text you want to put in there. And then we're going to create the graph. Okay, this is just a layout, so there's nothing there yet. But we're going to connect the data or the interval with the graph um, with this callback. Again, I'm going to assume you know a little bit about the callback. If you don't know about the callback, callback just click on the video above, um, pie chart drop down, and I go into the basics of how to um, connect all the data to create interactive graphs and all the what the user chooses to create uh, interactive graphs. So we'll go over that video first and then come back here. Um, but with this callback, we're actually going to take the interval and we're going to create the graph and we're going to uh, create the output of the of this div, the children, right, the text. Okay. So before we go any further, let's go over the parameters so we get an explanation of what each one of them means. First, you need an ID, like you always need it uh, every, for every component. You need an ID. We're going to call it my interval. Disable false means, uh, well, if it's true, the counter will no longer update, but we want it to be false because we do want it to be um, uh, um, enabled. We want it to work. Interval parameter means um, that it increments the n intervals, every interval. Uh, milliseconds. So in other words, these are 3,000 milliseconds times 1 equals 3 seconds. If you want 4 seconds, just change this to 4,000 and so on and so on. Um, and it means that now every 3 seconds your interval is going to update itself or your page is going to, is going to uh, re refresh the data that it is connected to. In this case, we're connecting the data to a, a, a bar chart 
people don't usually connect the intervals to a bar chart. They connect it to an API, to a weather or a financial data or the stock market, or they can connect it to, to uh, a database, an external database that downloads news. Um, but for the simplicity and the explanation of this um, tutorial, I'm just going to connect it to a bar chart so you know how it works and you can see how it works. Um, so you got the interval here, then you have the n intervals. n intervals just means the number of time the interval has been passed. So after three seconds, this is going to go to one because it's updated once. After six seconds, this is going to go up to two because it's updated two times. So every time it updates, um, this number goes up. Max intervals is the last parameter and it allows you to set the max number of intervals that you want before the interval stops so it doesn't update anymore. I put four, so it's going to stop at four. If you put minus one, which is a default, then it has no limit. It'll just go on forever and ever and ever, probably until we all die. And if you put zero, the interval stops running. So you can, we'll see what happens, how we put zero through the callback in order to stop the, to stop the interval uh, under a certain condition. Okay, so now that we know the parameters, let's see how we actually make them work and how they function. Important to note that interval doesn't mean anything. This is just here, but it, it it's only activated after you put it into a callback. So you have to activate it by using the callback and then the obviously the defining a function to to connect everything together. So we're going to take the n intervals as an input. We're going to take the number of times that the um, the dash app updates, and we're going to draw a chart with it. We're going to go into the figure of the chart, the bar chart, and we're going to output some, some text inside this div, right? Okay, so I'm going to say every three seconds because I that's what I did. Um, if num, num is right this, right here, and this is the n intervals. So if the n intervals num equals zero, which it always does at the beginning because it starts from zero, because we put here zero. If it equals zero, then prevent update. Then don't update the graph, don't update anything. But if it doesn't equal zero, then Y data, this is just for uh, uh, example purposes, Y data is gonna equal the num. So if num equals one, Y data equals one. If num equals two, it equals two. And then we're just gonna draw the graph based on this, with taking this into consideration. So we're gonna draw um, nine different bars, on the x-axis and the y-axis, uh, the the first time is going to be zero, so there's no going to be there's not going to be any graph because it's going to be prevent update. But the second time, y data is going to be equal one, that meaning that all the bars are going to have the height one. Then y data is going to be equal two because the interval goes up to number two, and then all the heights of the bars are going to be number two, and so on and so on. All right, so we're creating the bar here, and then we're going to output the text in the div, and we're going to output the figure, because we have two outputs. All right, so once you do that, you'll see, let's see an example of how this works. I'm refreshing, and remember, I'm outputting two things. I'm outputting the data in the figure. The y is going to equal to 1 here. Now the y equals to 2, and every three Mississippis, every three seconds, it's going to go up to 3, and then it's going to go up to four, and it's going to stop at four. And why does it stop at four? Because we put here max intervals four. Okay. The last thing we're going to see is how we actually um, do this. If zero in the max intervals, um, then if zero is is here, if ma max intervals equals zero, then and then it's actually going to stop the updates. So I'm again, this is just an example. I'm going to take the value of the input text, which is what the user inputs right here, and I'm going to say if the retrieve text, if that value equals stop, the string stop, then I'm going to say I'm going to assign zero to max intervals, right? And then I'm going to output the max intervals into, uh, in other words, I'm going to output zero into max intervals of the of the dash interval component. So essentially when this is zero, it stops. So if, if the user click stops, or maybe we'll change it, if they click um, no, they type no, the max intervals will equal zero, and then it will stop, or else just prevent update, just don't update anything. Okay, so let's see. Let's refresh. And now we change that to no. 
So it's updating. You see how it updates here every three seconds? The first time is zero, so there's nothing. Then it's three. If I put no, it continues to, oh, it stops, you see? It stops and now it's at it's at three. If I put anything else, let's say I put um, um, my name, let's see here, Adam, it's not gonna stop. If I put stop, it's not gonna stop because we changed it. But if I put no, it stops, oops. Did that, uh, did that too quick. Let's see it one more time. If I put no here, it's not updating anymore. You see, I don't even have to click enter. I just put no and the graph stopped updating because I tied it to a max intervals equals zero. So these are the only, all the things you can do with uh, interval. I know it seems simple, but it's very, very important to know because it allows you to control the frequency through which you are downloading information automatically um, from from somewhere, from a from a external uh, database, from an external website, from an API. In the future, you'll see a card here above that talks about how to create. I'm going to uh, put a tutorial about how to create an a API and tie all this information to create different graphs in uh, with Python. So you're going to see a weather API. You're going to see a financial stock market API. Um, API, and we're going to use the interval uh, for for that um, those uh, videos and those interactive um, um, web apps. So there you have it. We went all over the dash interval. Um, if you want more information, just go into this uh, website in the dash uh, website. They have great documentation, and you can read a little bit more about it. All right, so tip of the week. Um, this week, I would really, really like to recommend a great website that allows you to look into different graphs and learn all about how to use different graphs and plots that, that you've heard of or that you learned through the Charming Data channel. Um, and this is a website. It's called chartio.com, or at least I think that's how you say it. And you can see, for example, these are the links below the video. Just see essential chart types for data visualization. So it goes over all the, like the bar chart, the line chart, scatter plot, the histogram, and violin. And if you go into an open, click on one of these um, charts, it actually explains all about when to use it, why to use it, uh, when you should, um, how to manipulate it, and examples of structures. Um, it also goes into how to choose the right data visualizations. So it breaks it down by um, change over time. If you want to see time, it'll tell you what kind of charts to use. If you want to show, um, uh, looking at data, how data is distributed, it'll tell you what kind of charts to use. So this is a great educational tool to learn all about um, uh, the different charts that you can create with um, with. Plotly, there's many different libraries out there, but I use Plotly, which is a great library because you can do everything in Python. You don't need JavaScript, you don't need anything, and if you connect it with Dash, you can actually create uh, like your own web apps. So to learn more, feel free to go into my uh, playlist above. That's the Python uh, Plotly graphs playlist. You can see all the different graphs or go into different Dash interactive um, uh, plots and you can learn more about that. Um, don't forget to subscribe below so you can get notifications of new uh, components that we go over every week or new graphs that we go over every week so you can become an expert on uh, data visualization and the type of web apps that you create for others. Thank you.